Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to the Sounding Star channel. My name is Alexander and we actually have a special guest with us today and that is uh, David Kendall. So say hi, uh, David. Hello. Yeah, so um, again, thank you so much for actually coming on Sounding Smart Channel and interviewing us. Um, and it's just a way for us to get to know you a little bit more, the man behind uh, the National Anthems uh, .info website. Because um, I, I remember just doing a lot of research in the past from years ago, uh, looking into these anthems. It seems like so many people have actually gone to your website <laughs> as uh, sources um, for, for everything from uh, school papers and such. Um, this is really cool. So um, just out of curiosity, what is your background? Do you, do you have a background in history or music or just in general, just what started it all? Um, well, basically, it's just basically a love of geography and learning things. Uh, I remember when I was, oh, maybe about 10 years old or so, I got really into maps and flags and other geographical information. So I've been interested in uh, geography and history my whole life. I don't have any formal training in that. Uh, I mean, I took a couple of courses in geography and history at university, but it was nowhere near my major or anything like that. Uh, but it's been a lifelong interest of mine. And that's uh, kind of how the uh, website got started, just started from my love of learning about countries, learning about things like that. And sometime in the early 90s, I uh, got a computer program, which was called uh, PC Globe Maps and Facts. And it had all the maps in it that I liked. It had all the national data in it that I liked and all that information. And it had national anthems in it. Um, I mean, I'd heard a few national anthems at that point, but it had a lot of national anthems in it. And I had not heard many of these before, so I was going through them, going through them. Uh, but as you know, this in the early 90s, there were a lot of new countries coming about. Uh, Yugoslavia was disintegrating, the Soviet Union was disintegrating. So there was a lot of countries there that they didn't have the anthem for because it was just uh, too new. And I was uh, thinking about things like, oh, well, what does this anthem sound like? And what does that anthem sound like? <clears throat> Excuse me, what does that anthem sound like and all that? So I try to find out information that they didn't have. And again, keep in mind, this is the early 1990s. I did have an internet account at that point, but most people didn't. The information on the internet was really new. Uh, so I'd be writing to embassies and things like that to find out information. Wow. Uh, I still have the, the envelope of the very first embassy that wrote me back. The embassy of Turkmenistan oh, wrote me goodness. back. Uh, <laughs> the postmark on here is April the 3rd, 1997, which I later found out was very shortly after they did uh, adopt their first post-independent anthem. So I, I heard from them and of course that uh, set me on more information because there wasn't really that much information on the internet by that point. I I wound up learning more than what was on the internet. Um, I'd accrued more information than was out there. So I, uh, as I said, I had an internet account at that point. So I started making up a web page based on what my in, uh, what my knowledge was because there wasn't anything out there, and I figured it would it would help help out people. This was three months before Wikipedia even even came out. No, about a year and three months. That's right. They came out in 2001. This was late 1999 that I made my website. So, um, yeah, so it just started with a love of knowledge and filling in the blanks of knowledge. Yeah, I feel like that's, um, that's what it has been with a lot of people who, if you look on YouTube, there are just channels dedicated to anthems, mm -hmm. uh, you know, f form former anthems and just people just putting up all of these uh, recorded pieces of music. And it's just incredible just how, how vast the music has been uh, further exposed. Uh, I, I feel like um, just a lot of that just ended up coming from a love of, to be honest, discovery. Uh, mm. Discovery. Oh, I love that, um, yeah. Because that, that was how, how I actually got into it as well. Um, 
you know, we all grew up learning the United States national anthem, both you and I as Americans. Uh, but also, I'm half Mexican American, mm-hmm. and I remember the first time my a family went to the living room, and we on in September. There's usually the Mexico's Independence Day, and they would often sing in unison Mexico's national anthem, and that was the first time I've actually ever heard it, oh. and I thought it was really fascinating. You know, so I thought. Wait a minute. If the U.S. has an anthem, and this is me, I'm really, really young. Um, yeah. If this is, if the U.S. has a national anthem, and if Mexico has an anthem, then there is a whole other world out there. And over time, I just gradually ended up, you know, discovering all these new anthems, these different melodies, so, so much grandeur uh, and and pride that you often. Uh, see many anthems associated with when people are singing them but uh yeah so uh for, first off what got you into just so that's pretty much how you started the website did, what did yeah. you start getting word that there was sort of a a want or a need from different people all over the world to actually get more information about these anthems well i'm still kind of uh, blown away at uh the feedback that I get on the site and people wanting to learn more about the site. As I said, uh, my website's been around for a while. It started out as just a sub page of my personal homepage, but it was, uh, as I said, about a year even before Wikipedia came on the scene, which is, I assume, what uh, is what a lot of people use for Anson's research, and I'll I'll give it that. But uh, yeah, I'm just amazed by who comes to me and all that. And the Anthems community itself is uh, quite a small community. Mm -hmm. There's not that many people who really study Anthems extensively. And uh, I mean, the community is so small that as far as I know, there it hasn't really been a word for people who study national anthems until I came up with the term anthematology. Well, uh, myself and uh, help from a friend who studies classical languages. So I do have to give him credit for that. But uh, as far as I know, there wasn't even really a name for a study of the term. That's how small the community has been. But uh, I'm really pleased to see people uh, like you mentioned, other YouTubers uh, posting anthems. Uh, yourself, who uh, makes a uh, your excellent channel on anthems research that's uh, even more than what I have on my page. And I have to keep reminding myself how many people rely on these resources because I get so busy at times. There's so many things that I want to update on the website. And um, I have to remind myself that, hey, my website is... Uh, is a tool for research. (laughs) I have all this research sitting around and I got to remind myself as to why I made it in the first place to move this research from my head to the world. Yeah, see, usually when when I'm doing these Anthem videos, one of the first things I do is go directly to your website. You know, what what is the general summary of the enough information provided? I, you know, you can, look up uh, an mp3 the audio get a quick listen you even have the sheet music when it's possibly available mm-hmm. of, of the anthem um, and what people don't know is you have pretty much every single country out there it doesn't have to be countries of the united nations member list right, or exactly. of NATO. it's it's every one of them and it's it's former uh countries that that used to exist. I believe at last count, I have 416 anthems on the site, and there's <laughs> only about 193 UN countries. Uh, I, I was I remember too about this funny story that I wanted to share. There was one fact on my website. I had it on there since forever, and. Uh, I was wondering, well, where did I get this information from? I want to make sure that this information is accurate because I didn't even write down where I got it from. Like, am, is this something that I just made up or where did I learn this from? So I went all over the internet trying to find out um, something that could corroborate this or disprove it. Very little research. As I said, it's 
it's very hard out there to find research. That's why I have my page. But finally, I did find this one site uh, that that mentioned this fact, and it pretty much said exactly what I was saying. So I said, great, what is its source? And I took a look at the source for that particular quote. It was my site. <laughs> 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 so, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's being used out there a lot, and uh, yeah, I I'm really blown away by that. Um, just just curious, what has just been the overall reaction from visitors of the website, as well as feedback from researchers uh, who go on it for a secondary source? Because because uh, it seems like you know. Have you had any delegates or ministers or representatives from other countries that have uh, offered questions or their services? Um, what, what has been the overall response to it? Uh, well, I haven't had any official government people that I can think of. I know I've uh, talked to a few government people to get information for the site, but I don't think I've had any contact me that I can uh, that I can recall. I'm guessing that they have their own people for that. And uh, personally, I'd love to have a job where I can use my Anthem knowledge in some way. But <laughs> uh, one of the one of those people would be perfect for me. But I do have uh, researchers and things contacting me. And as I said, there isn't really much sites out there that have a great wealth of information. I, Wikipedia is probably about it and um, a lot of its information is from my side as well. So mm -hmm. I really have to watch where I'm getting uh, getting my information from to make sure I'm not quoting myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's, a, it's another site out there and it's not uh, like Wikipedia where anybody can edit it. Uh, mine at least has, um, mine at least has research behind it and, and and that kind of thing behind it. Uh, one of the projects that I'm planning for my site, and I know this is a question that you'll be asking me later, uh, one of the projects that I'm planning for my site is to actually annotate more of the uh, research on their footnotes so that people can actually back up what I'm uh, what I'm speaking about because at least Wikipedia has that going for it where they can go back and find a source whereas myself uh, my own knowledge doesn't really cut it for a lot of research people even though even though it is something that I do study uh, it should be something that I should quote it's been about Oh goodness, it's been about 25 years since I've been in university, so I have to remember how to do all that uh, citing sources and all that for uh, for research. But um, it, it is something that people do do come, and I and I feel that it's because it is one of the few so sources like it out there. Oh my! Wow. Uh, yeah. You, you, it just seems like it's just an endless project in a way. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to this new field of anthematology, I feel like there's there's not really much of a re requirement as to really who can state as you know someone who studies it. Um, I mean, if people would assume, you know, usually have either a degree in ethnomusicology or music in general along with history, but I, I feel like um, it just hasn't been dissected in a way where you just have so many people, um, so many yeah, people in the small niche community who are really devoting mm -hmm. their lives to really releasing historic music in a way. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, it, it's do you do you see it kind of getting bigger in any way? I do. Um, as I said, when I first started back in the early '90s, and even when I was uh, first researching on the internet, I really thought that I was the only one out there. And now, you, uh, people like you with your channel are coming up, as you mentioned, all the other Ansem's researchers. I've uh, found a few discussion boards where people who like to learn about Ansem's uh, chat. Uh, so the community is getting bigger. And uh, 
one of the good things about uh, Anthem's research is that people who are interested in history, people who are interested in geography, people who are interested in music, it has such a wide catchment of people that could be interested in uh, national anthems research and that might be where people are coming from from various um, backgrounds whether it's uh, geography or music or things like or things like that yeah because uh, one, one thing I, I stated I think it was in my Afghanistan video was uh, a national anthem is an emblem of a certain country. Uh, and when it comes to studying national emblems, you have everything from coat of arms, uh, you have uh, e even just, you know, items, historic items, like for example, in, Bol in Bolivia with uh, Simon Bolivar's uh, saber, uh, which is so unique. Or, um, it, and that also applies with so many national anthems. It's, now it's, it's going to specific where you have a vexillologist that are studying uh, <laughs> flags, yeah. And then you have other people focusing on the coat of arms. I don't know the, the um, correct. Harold so, Very. And, and then you have people that study anthems, anthematologists, that really just dissect on these different and unique emblems. Um, may, although some don't have as large of, of a following like Bexlawalis just do. Yeah, exactly. But, um, but uh, I, I, like you said, uh, over time, there will be that growth and i think that's really we're really going to look uh forward to seeing that grow sometime in the near future yeah so, i found that there's a lot of overlap between uh vexillologists and anthematologists uh, both myself and my uh, uh co-editor uh, zachary harden i know him through my interest in flags i've been interested in flags even uh, before i was interested in anthems and as you said that's a much bigger community uh i may be the person among my small circle of friends who knows a lot about flags but i'm not even a uh, medium-sized fish in a big pond in the vexillology circles, uh, but in national anthems, I'm uh, a little bit more of a big fish because of its uh, it's such a small pond. But yeah, because national anthems and vexillology has such an overlap because, as you said, they're both national emblems. Yeah, it and uh, I, I remember when when I started the channel, I was really um, I really wanted to establish kind of an identity for this YouTube channel, Sounding Smart. And the identity w was for it to just stretch among those dedicated to the education uh, of national emblems. Um, and that's why I, I had a thought, think of everything from my own flag to my own anthem. And, uh, and it, it's amazing how much identity goes into a flag, even in the most simplest of forms into the most complex. Yeah, like, like in your case, your flag has to uh, represent 330 million people. And it, it's hard to even get three people to uh, really be united under one thing. So, and, and that's the same for an anthem too. It has to really speak for all of the citizens of a nation. Yeah, yeah. And, um, uh, other than that, um, do you, do you have any um, any other kind of projects you're you know, brainstorming in the near future? Um, uh, any or do, how can we um, follow follow up on that? Is there any where where we could actually um, see what's going to be happening? Uh, well, of course, there's the uh, website nationalanthems.info, and on there, there's a link to our uh, Twitter and Facebook pages where I usually announce uh, if I've updated any of the material on there. I figured that that's the best way to uh, get information about updates on there because, of course, people do like to know that. Uh, I would like to do more updates. As I said, I've been stockpiling too much information. I really have to, really have to update things. And I've been watching your your site too. And there's a lot of things that uh, you mentioned in your videos. I think, yeah, that should probably go on the web page. Right now, the biggest project, aside from, uh, as I mentioned earlier, wanting to get more of the footnotes and annotations in to really make it uh, seem more of a research project. One of our biggest um, 
projects is about a year or so ago, we got uh, mailed to us uh, a gentleman in England. His father recently passed away, and his father was a great collector of national anthem recordings. And he'd written a few papers about national anthems. He was very, very much well into the uh, field. And when his father passed away, uh, he wanted to see who would benefit from these kind of uh, items. And he found uh, my website on there and contacted me. And um, he sent me a couple great big boxes full of records and very old sheet music uh, that was sent. Uh, some of the old records from like as far as I can tell, they go back to the turn of the 20th century, the early 1900s, 1910s, some of the records, and uh, some of the sheet music that, that we have here, this old uh, Italian sheet music from, it says on here 1911, but I'm pretty sure by the age of some of the anthems that are in here, I think it might even be 1900 or earlier than that. So there's a lot of information that I've been digitizing. The digitizing is finished now. What my next real big hurdle is, is to find out how I can share all this information about very old anthem recordings, very old anthem uh, sheet music, um, things like that on the internet to have kind of a research center on national anthems for people who were uh, like me uh, 20, 25 years ago who wanted a place to research national anthems. Uh, I would have killed for some of this information 25 years ago, uh, but uh, what, what my big hurdle is now is to find out uh, exactly what I can put up by copyright law. And that's a big hurdle, of course. Uh, lawyers cost money. We don't have that much uh, money to spend being a just uh, just a small website, basically. So my next total is just trying to get all this great, great information, recordings, sheet music, um, uh, papers by the uh, by the uh, late father um, to put those on the internet and to start a national anthem uh, research center um, for people who want to research and uh, research national anthems and start their uh, love of anthems. Wow. Well, oh my goodness. I, can't, I honestly can't, can't wait for, for what's coming up. This will be <laughs> Oh, same exciting. here, same here. <laughs> yeah, uh, but uh, thank you so much, uh, David, for joining me on this interview here um and and for those who are actually watching if you actually want to go ahead and donate to to david for his projects um there uh, there is this website at nationalanthems.info where you can go ahead and uh, donate anything over there uh yep. anything you like to say uh to to any of our viewers uh well first of all again thank you so much for the work that you do on uh, your site it is uh I, I see it as kind of like the youtube equivalent of uh of the national anthems info site because you do a lot of uh, research on there and yeah if you're interested in uh, sounding smart uh, be sure to check out national anthems.info um and i hope that you to to the viewers i hope that you really develop a love of learning about anthems too because it is it, it is basically a love of learning as well oh all right well thank you so much david and thank you so much everyone who's actually uh decided to uh, join us today um go ahead and check up national anthems info as well as check out more videos on sounding smart channel uh, look forward to uh to the algeria episode which uh will be provided with uh with sources and questions uh being answered by algerian composer salim dr salim dada and uh once again everyone take care and don't forget explore embrace evolve i'll see you next time thank you so much